Hello and welcome to Smock Dev Workshop. This is an introduction to design patterns. We'll start with the basics. What are design patterns and how they came to be? What design patterns are not? Why use them? And when is a good time to learn them? Then we'll go over what design patterns are there and I will try to point you towards some further reading. But before that, I'll just mention that my name is Rafał and I am currently working for Amazon Prime Video. And this series is not meant as a definite reference for this topic. It is supposed to help you start exploring and researching design patterns as you come to need them. When I first heard about design patterns, they seemed mystical, extremely hard topics that were used to scare junior developers. As you'll see in a second, they are not as scary. But what are design patterns? Web page Java Design Patterns com, which I deeply recommend, says Design patterns are the best formalized practices a programmer can use to solve common problems when designing an application or a system. Nice! So we can avoid some common pitfalls by following something that is prepared for us by devs with more practice. Such design pattern consists of four things. One. A good, clear name that is short and accurate abbreviation of the design pattern. 2. A description which explains the solved problem in depth. 3. An actual solution described in a possibly abstract way. 4. Consequences of using the pattern, both good and bad. That is still a bit vague, so let's throw in a little story. The first book on design patterns was written by four computer scientists. Eric Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson and John Vlissides, also known as Gang of Four, or GOF in short. Over the years of their experience, they reviewed the code in systems they were working on and extracted the most common best practices, which help different developers across organizations to reach good results. They came up with a little over 20 patterns and described them in a book like this one. <laughs> well, obviously, this is a Polish version, but you can get English one online. The most simple example of design pattern I can think of is a singleton, which in plain words ensures that only one object of particular class is ever created, and singleton will provide a global access to it. Got it? Nice! What design patterns are not? Design patterns are not algorithms. They are meant to provide a guidance on structure, relations and hierarchy of objects, classes and interfaces in the application and they are a way of thinking about abstraction, not so much about underlying data. They don't solve every problem. Sometimes Situation may require from you to choose one pattern over the other and you may get it wrong, but don't worry. The upside is even making such a mistake is oftentimes better than coming up with a different solution on your own, because most likely you saved yourself a lot of trouble that may come from different places you haven't thought of. But remember, don't use them if they will make your code more complex. They are meant 
to simplify things for you, not the other way around. So make sure you understand the pattern well to practice it in isolation before using it in production code. All right, so why use them? Ha! Huh. Reusing design patterns will help prevent subtle issues which may cause major problems. They are agreed terms improving code readability for coders and architects who are familiar with these patterns. In other words, if you know the pattern, you can quickly recognize it in a code and get the gist of it without reading every line. And the other way around. In office communication, it is simpler and more precise to discuss possible solution using patterns that your team knows and understands, rather than describing the solution piece by piece every time you get back to it. And like algorithms, they are universal to every object-oriented language. So learn once, benefit forever. Aspiring developers ask, when is it a good time to learn design patterns? My answer is, don't rush it. First, get around knowing and practicing basic programming principles like KISS, DRY, YAGNI, and so on. Learn data structures and algorithms. Get to understand object-oriented programming. And by that, I mean fundamentals of this paradigm. Encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, and composition. Make sure you understand differences between interface and base class, abstract versus concrete. Also, I want to clearly state that you don't need to learn every single pattern there is or learn them in any particular order. You obviously want to start with the most common to understand what other people are talking about. But after that, you're free to explore what interests you. <laughs> and as I said previously, start shallow and broad. Scheme through as many as you can at the beginning. When you know what they do, go deeper. Only if you need to. So, what design patterns are there? Gang of Four proposes three categories. Creational, structural and behavioral. Other sources also suggest functional concurrency, architectural, cloud distributed, and others. Let's start from the most commonly known gang of four design patterns. The creational design patterns are obviously responsible for efficient object creation mechanisms, which will increase the flexibility and the reuse of existing code. Under this category, we have factory method, abstract factory, prototype, builder, and singleton. Structural design patterns are responsible for building simple and efficient class hierarchies and relations between different classes. They consist of adapter, bridge, composite, decorator, proxy, facade, and flyway. Behavioral patterns define manners of communication between classes and objects. This is the longest list. Template method, chain of responsibility, command, iterator, mediator, memento, observer, strategy, state, visitor. In following videos, I'll go deeper into those so you can understand how they look, how they work, how they feel like, what are they about. So do stick around, and if you rather grab a book, read more online, look into description for some good references and suggestions. And that's it for today. Subscribe, comment and share. Cheers!